Good morning and welcome back to Maesot, Thailand. It is Tuesday, May 19th, and it's looking like today is going to be another shopping day. I'm really getting interested in using my phone for all my computing tasks. So to take the pressure off the need for a new laptop, I think I'm going to buy a wireless keyboard and uh, see how that works with my phone. <laughs> Crazily enough, I already have a Logitech wireless keyboard in storage in Malaysia. I just didn't bring it with me on this trip when I went to Myanmar. So I don't have it with me. But when I was at one of these computer shops before, I noticed they had a big stack of Logitech MK220 wireless keyboard and mouse sets. And they're not very expensive. So even if I only use it for a few weeks or a month or something like that, I think it'll be worth it to me. So I'm gonna pick up one of those today. I'm walking to the computer shop right now. And I thought along the way, I would stop off at one of these uh, bike shops that I keep seeing. I'll flip the GoPro around and show you one of them. Right here, you can see there's a whole series of uh, bike shops. It looks like they sell refurbished bikes, like older ones that they've uh, fixed up. So I thought I'd pop over there today and uh, take a look at what they have for sale. Since I'm buying keyboards, maybe I could also buy, pick up a used bike for a while, use it here in Mesot while I'm here. As always, it's crazy how busy the roads are here. I need traffic lights just across. Hello. Look at the bike. So I've got an old uh, department store mountain bike there. A whole bunch of uh, BMX style bikes and then some folding bikes. No prices on any of them. Here's a whole collection of uh, like your basic uh, girls city bikes with the basket on the front. Whole bunch of uh, folding bikes. Look at the back area here. So many parts. Piles of uh, bicycle parts. I guess that's the, uh, the workroom. I didn't see very much in that shop that would uh, interest me. But this is the uh, shop next door. Seems to have a uh, bigger selection. Like these are very popular models. The women's bike with the, uh, the basket. And it looks like there's some new bikes back there. I keep calling these women's bikes because they have the, uh, that shape there so that you can ride them more easily while wearing a dress or a skirt. But uh, I think men could ride those bikes as well. And then they have a few uh, new bikes back there, road bikes. Not a terribly successful shopping expedition so far. <laughs> One thing about a lot of the shops in Asia, 
is that they don't have prices listed quite often. And I know I could go into that shop and find one bike that I'm interested in and then ask the guy, how much is this bike? And then I see another one that I'm interested in. How much is that bike? And to be honest, for me, with my background, I'm just too lazy to do that. If I don't see listed prices, I just kind of get bored and, and I end up not buying something there. It's just the way I'm wired. If they had prices on each of the bicycles, I could sort of get a sense of how much they're charging and uh, whether it would be worth my while. But if I have to ask about the actual price of every single item in a shop, I usually just go somewhere else. Anyway, on to the uh, computer shop to get my uh, keyboard. Oh, by the way, the uh, bike shopping is not over yet because to my surprise, when I was looking for bike shops in Mesot, I discovered that there's a dedicated touring shop here. It blew my mind. I just saw it online this morning. It's a bicycle shop that sells touring bicycles and pannier bags, pannier racks, and all the kind of gear that you would use for bike touring. I had no idea there was a shop like that here in Mesot, so I'm gonna go check it out after I go to the uh, computer store. And this is where I got my hair cut the other day. Vintage style tan barber, barbershop. As you can see, they just have the uh, one chair in there and then a nail salon next door. And that's where I went. And it's right across the, uh, the road from this computer shop, Advice. I've seen a lot of these Advice outlets around Mesod. Seems to be a, a big chain. But I saw the uh, Logitech keyboard here. One keyboard? Yeah, the wireless. Wireless, wireless and yeah. mouse. Yeah, keyboard and mouse. Yeah. Well, that was quick. I did all my research online, so I knew in advance that I wanted this particular keyboard. So I just went in, picked it out, paid for it, and now I have it. And I'll, uh, I'll go over it in a little bit of detail later on when I get back to my uh, hotel room. It was an interesting experience, again though, just to be shopping, because I'm kind of interested in customer service and systems and how they're different from one country to the next. Because one thing in Asia is that, like I bought this uh, keyboard and me, what I want to do with my personality, I just want to buy it, then take it back to my home and then I want to open it up myself, right? I want to open it look at all the uh, parts that come with it, read the manual if there was one, unpackage it, kind of have the pleasure of unpacking it, putting in the batteries, plugging it in for the first time, testing it. That for me is part of the um, pleasure of uh, shopping and buying something new. But here in Thailand, you don't really get that pleasure because part of the customer service here is that they do all that for you before you buy it. They want to make sure that it works well before they sell it to you and before you take it home. So I told the guy in the shop, okay, that's the one I want. And all I wanted to do was pay for it and take it. But he took it to their special testing area. And then he opens up the box, takes everything out, takes the batteries out of their little packaging, puts the batteries into the mouse and the uh, keyboard and then he plugged it into a computer to show me that it works you know that the mouse works and the keyboard works so i mean yeah that's great customer service right at least i know that it's not defective and he knows that he sold me you know a product that's in good working order but at the same time i feel like i was robbed of the experience of opening my present myself he got to have all the pleasure of doing that and the funny thing is that being the kind of uh, customer that I am, I knew everything about this keyboard already. You know, I did so much research into it. I knew exactly 
all the ins and outs. But he, the clerk, he had no idea. So he didn't know which batteries went in the mouse, which ones went in the uh, keyboard. He didn't know how to put them in. And then he kept looking for an on-off switch, like on the mouse. He was looking, where is the on-off? Like, where is the light to show that it's on? And I knew from my research that this particular model is so inexpensive that there is no off-on button on the mouse. It's just always on. And then he tried to put the batteries in the keyboard. He had no idea how to do it. I had to show him where the compartment was. And then he looked for the on-off switch and the pairing switch and all these buttons on the keyboard. He's turning it around, looking at it from all different directions. Then he couldn't find any on-off button. And again, I tried to explain to him in English, there is no on-off button on this one. All you do is plug in the dongle and then it just pairs automatically and, and away you go. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting that he wanted to give me all this great customer service but in the end, it really wasn't that great at all because he had no idea how to operate the product himself. So, yeah. customer service, different countries, it's always kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, let's head off to the last stop for today, which will be my touring bicycle shop. My mind is still blown that there is such a shop here because touring bicycles are a high-end niche kind of luxury item. And I'm not sure why there would be a shop like that here in uh, Mesot, but I'm glad there is. So I'm going to try and uh, track it down. Well, I, f I figured out that the bike shop should be right up this street, right across from me. And I don't know if you can see that, but that's the, uh, entran the entry on Google Maps. It's called the Bike Signature Mesod shop touring only and it looks like they carry uh, surly products which is interesting anyway let's go uh, check it out look for bike signature okay having some trouble uh, locating this place i'm supposed to be standing right in front of it but i don't see it it could be misplaced on google maps but there's actually a pair of touring bikes right here. Locked up out front. So some foreigners are, or it could be a local guy doing some bike touring. And you'd think if there's an actual touring bike parked here, this guy must be uh, visiting the touring bike shop. <laughs> it can't be too far away. But I don't see anything. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. So you build your own bikes. So you, usually you use Surly frames? Yeah. Surly Troll, Disc Trucker. Nice. <coughs> oh, clean canteen. Oh, and you carry some pannier bags, Ortlieb. Yeah. Have you been to Canada on your bicycle? Canada. For you? Did you go to Canada? Canada. What? Bicycle? Yeah, for you? Did yeah. you go to Canada? Canada. Yeah. No? No. Uh, no been. Canada. No been. You from Canada? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's me on a giant TV inside the uh, bicycle shop. <laughs> there's the bicycle shop. And there's the uh, cycling Canadian without his uh, bicycle.
It's okay. Look, and look who I found here. Did I adopt? I love dogs. Oh. <laughs> You're so big and strong. Did you go? Did you go? I got to. Uh, I got knocked over by my new friend here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> He's like Superman. Superman. Yeah. He, came, he came flying yeah. like that. Strong. Yeah, strong dogs. Yo, can I take a video of, of you and your bicycle? <laughs> so, this is the owner of Signature Signature Touring? Bike Signature. Bike signature? Yeah. No? Okay. And every day he goes out on his bike just for exercise. Yeah. So, that's great. What was the last country you went to to go bike touring? Uh, Luton. Luton. Yeah? In Thailand? Uh, uh... Myanmar. Myanmar. Uh, every month, uh, one month, one time. Okay, great. One year, one one month. Okay. One time. Mm -hmm. Many many been in Myanmar. Okay. Yeah, many many been in Myanmar. So is your bicycle a surly? No. No, uh, two terrain. Two terrain. Two terrain. Ah, two Germany. terrain. Nice. From Germany. Great. From Germany. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks again. I'll see you. And there he goes. That is what you call a dedicated cyclist because his bike is completely loaded for round the world touring, but he's not going anywhere. He's just going around the city just for fun. Maybe it's a good advertising for his shop. So it's not surprising I couldn't find the place because it is up on the second floor above the um, some kind of a fabric store or household goods store and there's no sign on the outside at all so i guess he knows his customers well if you are into bike touring you're i mean it's a commitment in a lot of ways so anyone that does bike touring is pretty seriously committed and when we want to find a bike touring shop we will keep looking until we find it even if it is up on the uh second floor and hidden <laughs> yeah it was kind of shut down today i think he just sort of opens it up when he has a customer he ran upstairs for me turned on the lights and i got to look around and he builds you know does custom builds based on surly frames and then you I guess you pick and choose all of your components yeah i mean if you were uh, out on a bike tour through thailand and into myanmar this would be a good place to know about because you're sure to need some parts or some repairs before you head into uh, Myanmar. Man, this is another crazy busy street. This, I've never been here before either. It looks like uh, it's dedicated mainly to hardware and car parts, machinery, machine tools, all that kind of stuff. I don't think I caught very much of it on video, but I had a, a pretty funny encounter with their two bulldogs. Big, strong, heavy dogs. And uh, it was kind of a famous last words moment because when I came down the stairs, I saw these dogs come running to the steps. And I love dogs. I mean, I just love dogs like crazy. So I couldn't wait to uh, say hi to these dogs. But the owners were trying to keep them away because I think a lot of people, um, maybe Thai people in general, would be frightened of dogs. But you take one look at these bulldogs, they don't have much of a tail, but their whole, the, their whole back end, their butts are just like wagging like insane things. So you could tell that they were uh, really friendly. So <laughs> I really wanted to get down with the dogs and say hi to them. And then they uh, pulled the dogs away, actually, and kind of brought them to the back. But then they said to me, oh, you like dogs? And I said, yeah, I love dogs. <laughs> Famous last words, because when I said I love dogs, they let go of the bulldogs. 
and one of them came flying at me and literally like leaped through the air like Superman and landed right on my chest and knocked me over backwards onto the floor. And then both of them climbed on top of me and they're such exuberant, heavy dogs, I couldn't get back up. I, I was pretty much trapped on the floor with these two dogs on top of me. So uh, next time you say, I love dogs, be careful, you uh, might get more than you bargained for. Anyway, I hope I caught some of that on video. Wow, whole new part of the city. Big open air market here. Just over here on my left, I've walked by a few markets in uh, Maysod and a lot of them seem to be closed. They were just empty um, stalls on the inside. But this one seems to be uh, wide open. Yeah, look at this neighborhood. Really interesting. Fresh vegetables and fruits. Eggs. Really interesting building over there. I looked it up on Google Maps and all I saw in English was produce market. There's probably a name for it in Thai, but it's really a big area. It just goes on in uh, all kinds of different directions. I think that is the, uh, the main building over there with the uh, curved roof and then it extends out into all these other buildings all around. And this is the uh, main market building here, I think, or at least this is the uh, wet market area. This end of the market doesn't seem to be open, but I imagine this is where they would be selling fish and poultry, all freshly made ready for the market. And a lot of dry goods as well. Nice for them to have the roof over the market to keep the rain out. Speaking of rain, Every day here for weeks, it feels like someone has told me that the rainy season is starting. I mean, every day. And it just won't rain. I keep seeing news reports about rain all over Thailand. I mean, heavy rain to the point of causing flooding, I think. It's at least making the news. But here, where I am in Thailand, it's supposed to be the rainy season. That's what they tell me. <laughs> but no rain at all every day it feels like it heavy dark clouds covering the whole sky but there never seems to be uh, any rain it's crazy it's like every corner here is like uh, Times Square just trying to uh, find your way through the traffic to get across Actually, this, ma this market is starting to make more sense to me now because there's the, the big market building back there and that's this whole area is where I just was and the bike shop is in that direction. But it leads into this street and this street is the main market street that I'm actually familiar with. So I've been here before. I just never walked all the way to the end and popped out into that other uh, market area. But for quite a while, of course, this street was quite empty and deserted like everywhere else. But since Thailand is opening up, as you can see, everything is in a full swing. It's midday, so there aren't that many people here shopping. But all the uh, shops are open, all the stalls are open. And then all the, uh, all the uh, sugar cane sellers like this guy can make some money. 
and all the delivery drivers can start making money again because a lot of the women that would come here to go shopping would then hire a guy on a bicycle or a motorcycle to drive her back home with all the stuff that she bought. See, let's see how this works here. The sugar cane. Oh, just a bag of ice. Oh, and then he already has the uh, sugar cane juice ready to go. He doesn't have to uh, prepare it for every customer. He's got a little uh, ladle spin going on. Excuse me, that one? I mentioned in a video long ago that I once got very, very sick after getting sugarcane juice. And then I've always had kind of a uh, hesitancy about buying it because I associate it with uh, being sick. But I'm sure that was just a one-off occasion. Let's, uh, so we'll give this a try. Thank you. There we go. So oh, that was very cool. I love to see these guys that do the same thing, you know, thousands of times a week and they develop such skill at it, you know? So there's my uh, bag of ice and sugar cane juice with a straw. It cost a 10 baht, which would be what, 33 cents US or something like that. Ooh. There goes one of the uh, like bicycle delivery guys I mentioned. Kind of operates like a taxi in the market. <laughs> one thing about this uh, sugarcane juice, it's quite sticky. And I've already spilled a bunch of it over my hands. So I'm going to have uh, sticky fingers for a while. So I'm going to have to uh, adjust my mask here and see if I can take a sip of this. I'm letting it get a little bit colder. I like the ice to make it really, really cold. Wow, that is really good. Hmm. I'm kind of used to sugarcane juice having a little bit of a, not a bitter flavor, but if it's pure, like right out of the sugarcane, there's something a little bit overwhelming about it. This feels more like a processed drink maybe. Maybe he watered it down a bit and added more natural sugar or something, I don't know. Anyway, it tastes, uh, very good. Hmm, very nice. <laughs> and it helps that I'm so thirsty. When I go out walking around Mesot in this heat, just a couple of hours, and if I do go back to the hotel right after that, I can put away liter after liter after liter of cold water. I get so uh, dehydrated so fast. I don't tend to drink enough when I'm uh, out walking around. So we're coming out the uh, far end of this market street. <laughs> you always see such amazing uh, mannequins in different countries around the world. I think I've seen that one before actually. sugarcane juice even spilled all over my toes. So now I've got uh, sticky toes in my sandals. So you can see that this market road opens or out onto the main road right near my uh, bubble milk tea shop and not too far away from my uh, current hotel.
And here we are, right back on uh, one of the main streets. I'm spoiling myself today. I had my sugar cane juice, which was really delicious. And then I thought I would stop for a bubble milk tea as well. And there she is uh, behind me uh, preparing it. They have bubbles today. <laughs> Funny thing is, uh, I said that I love dogs and then I get mauled to death with love by two giant bulldogs. And then right after that, I say, you know, what's up with the rainy season? Why isn't there any rain? I really like rain. And of course it uh, starts raining right now. <laughs> Not so heavily though. This isn't rainy season rain. This is just a sprinkling. But uh, it could start raining more and then I get soaking wet before I get back to the uh, hotel. So heading back to the hotel now. That was uh, almost too many treats for one morning. Got a new keyboard. A bicycle touring shop being mauled by two lovely English bulldogs or giant bulldogs, whatever they were. Sugarcane juice and bubble milk tea and rain. It's too many treats in one day. Whew. So there it is, my new Logitech MK220 wireless keyboard and mouse with the uh, dongle that has to plug into your laptop or your phone or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It's just very supposed to be very small. It's probably not perfect for me, but it's the only one that's available in town. For example, I don't really need the number pad on the side here. I would never use that number pad. So you could get rid of that and make the keyboard actually bigger, you know, the actual letters part but it should work out okay. So that is the mouse. It's very lightweight, but it does take two double uh, A batteries. So once you put two double A batteries in there, it actually has quite a bit of weight. Yeah. In a way, this is going to be a pretty good deal for me because I do have a mouse that I use with my phone right now, but it's a very old mouse and the uh, scroll wheel isn't working very well. So just replacing the mouse is a good idea. And this should be the, uh, the dongle. A wireless receiver basically and finally the keyboard itself has two legs on the bottom yep, feels good keys have a lot of travel not too loud. It's all a little bit cluttered for me because this has all the Thai characters on it as well, in addition to the English letters. And I wouldn't use the Thai letters, so it actually looks a little bit uh, cluttered when you look at it. But I am a touch typist, so I don't actually have to see the letters in order to type. And the way this works with a phone is that you need something like this. This is an OTG adapter, an on-the-go. It's a little bit long and kind of bulky, but you take your uh, wireless receiver, plug it into that. And then you take your smartphone and plug this in. And if everything is working smoothly, yeah, there we go. I now have a mouse. And if I type here, letters should appear on the phone. Anyway, that's the end of my adventures for this morning. And I'm going to settle in and have my bubble milk tea 
play around with the keyboard and uh, see what's going on with that. And I'm here all hot and sweaty from my walk. And I'll see you in the next video.